Medical professionals over it. When was someone's self-diagnosis surprisingly accurate? Saw someone a. Uh, she had a runny nose and was insistent that her cerebrospinal fluid, the fluid that surrounds your brain, was leaking through her nose and causing her to have a runny nose. This is usually pretty unlikely, especially without a history of trauma. Order a CT of her head, but doesn't show anything and she otherwise looks fine so she sent home. She comes back the next day with a jar of this fluid she had collected saying this isn't not ran some more tests and turned out she was right. I'm glad she was persistent. I naively didn't even know this was a thing until reading your comment, yet I shall now forever presume every cold or onset of allergies is an indicator of brain fluid leaking from my nose. Super. Poor woman's husband drags her to her repeatedly for weeks on end with a bizarre variety of neurological symptoms. She'd seen a neurologist and was told it was all functional. MRI showed a rapidly growing brain tumor. She was having seizures. Her husband was 100% right. My blood turns cold just typing this. Poor woman. Poor family. Had a guy come into the air. He handed me a paper on brucellosis, saying that he had an infection with brucella. Turns out he was a large animal vet professor at a university, and was working in a lab studying the disease. He was right. Something like hey doc I'm one of the lead researchers on this disease, I know how to treat it. Here's a list of all the tests you need to run and what drugs I'll need to get better. I know how to treat it, but I don't have the script pad. Just the other week, had a 60 year old guy, reeking of cigarettes, come in for upper endoscopy, camera to look at the esophagus, stomach and part of the small bowel. He was describing food getting stuck mid swallow in the middle of his chest. I think it's esophagus cancer he said. I was thinking that too, but didn't say anything. Sure enough, that's exactly what it was. My husband had an issue with the food getting stuck mid-swallow for like a year or so. He said he just chalked it up to getting older. But when he was scanned after a motorcycle accident, doctors told him he had an 8cm mass in his esophagus. He had it removed, thankfully not cancerous. When trauma patients say, am I going to die right before they lapse into unconsciousness or get tubed for surgery, they are usually right, and they know it. Hydradenitis suppurativa, recurrent severe skin abscesses. She came in saying that she was worried she had it because she's had some abscesses in her armpit. 9 times out of 10 it's because of shaving with a dirty razor, which is what I told her. I'll be damned if she was right. Ended up having 5 plus abscesses that formed tracts requiring surgery. They recurred a few months later. Sent to dermatology who confirmed the diagnosis. Worked in the air when a lady ran in screaming that her husband was dead in the car. Staff walked out to see, I asked if they should hurry and they said no because people exaggerate those things. Turns out dude was dead. Based on the smell and bloating, had been for 3 or 4 days. She was a junkie and was living in the car half a days before she noticed he had odd. I mean, technically they still didn't have to hurry. When I worked as a camp counselor, I woke up one morning with severe joint pain. I'd slept on the ground the night before so I chalked it up to that. When it didn't go away after a couple days, I went to the camp nurse who diagnosed me with dehydration. After downing a 12 pack of Powerade, I'm still surprised I didn't pee blue, I still had the joint pain. A bunch of the other counselors were convinced that it was stress or that the fluid in my joints had dried up. And then I went and did the one thing you should never do. I logged onto WebMD and searched my symptoms. And right after cancer was Lyme disease. It made a lot of sense but I'd never had any rash or notice any tick on me. So I went back to the camp nurse and she had me leave camp to get a blood test and I ended up going into the ear because there wasn't a clinic available. But the nurse gave me a shot in the ass for the pain. Drew my blood, and an antibiotic on an empty stomach just in case. Turns out I was allergic to the antibiotic so I got hives and I threw it up. I received a call the next day that yes, I did have Lyme disease. Dried up joints, my ass. Disclaimer. I worked part time in Tridge at the air, so I'm not sure if you'd call me a professional. That being said, I don't remember a single person who claimed they had a kidney stone who was wrong. The only person I ever had who didn't have a kidney stone, and wasn't seeking, unfortunately had a ruptured ectopic pregnancy. I diagnosed myself with an adrenal tumor, 
My primary care doc kept telling me my symptoms were caused by lifestyle choices. I went to my gin who took me seriously when I showed him my research. It was a cancerous bioactive adrenal tumor the size of a grapefruit. That was over 2 years ago and I'm still fighting this cancer. I developed either recurrence or mets a few months after my initial surgery and I've been dealing with liver and lung mets ever since. I won the argument with my primary care doc but my prize was cancer. Sad trombone. I'm not medic but one of my co-workers is. His best story. Once a woman came to hospital to prove herself diagnosed diabetic. Blood test proved it. Doctor asked how did she know it? She answered that her urine is too sticky. And it makes sense. High sugar level can affect urine too. After hurting my knee and having to ice it all the time, I found I kept breaking out in hives after the ice. I went to the doctor and told him I thought I had cold induced urticaria, allergic to cold. My parents scoffed at it, the doctor had never had a patient with this so it was dismissed. After it kept happening to me I got them to send me to an allergist. My parents thought I was crazy until the doctor confirmed my diagnosis and handed my parents information on anaphylaxis. But at least now I get a handicapped parking pass in the winter and don't have to shovel the walk. I live in Canada. Not a medical professional, but I got hand foot and mouth disease back in my senior year of high school. I knew it was that because we were working with the virus that causes it in my biotech class. Doctor told me that there was no way I had it, because only children get it, and it rarely occurs in the winter. So he ordered a couple expensive tests, and sure enough I had it. By far the most miserable two weeks of my life. I got it last year. I was 23. Doctors denied my claims too. Since it's so rare in adults. They tried telling me I had chicken pox. Number. I was right. HFM. Caught off my kids. I went to my doctor because I thought I had appendicitis. He agreed and sent me to the hospital. They ran tests. Said I was fine and should go home. I refused. Called my doctor who called them and made them rerun the tests, with someone who knew what they were doing. They came back to me and had me in surgery within 2 hours. I had a dude come in the ear the other night and tell us he thinks he was shot. He absolutely nailed that one. But in all seriousness it was GSW to the head and the MRI was gnarly. Everyone with the MRI question. Most bullets are composed of non-ferromagnetic material but yes it is a case by case call. Careful consideration of risk benefit is therefore recommended in all patients. There is an MRI screening done by an on-site rad if one isn't available the screening goes to a telerad facility to ok the go ahead. This is all post CT. My side of the story but when I was a kid I felt real ill but didn't really have any symptoms. I just felt ill. My mum just thought I was trying to wag school and the doctors felt the same. They started to get really pee at me cause I was so ill for ages and kept crying at school and have to be picked up. Fast forward 2 months or so and my dad was bathing. I was like, 6. Me and saw these weird spots and bruises on my legs. Took me to a and e and after another couple weeks the tests came back and I had a rare form of leukemia and was super sick. Had almost 2 years off school and my brother had to donate me his bone marrow to survive. It was brutal. Can't remember much though apart from the chemo turning my pee blue. My stepfather is a doctor and told me two stories. One was an older Irish woman who correctly predicted that she had a tumor in her left lung roughly the size of a golf ball. She has never smoked or done anything that made her a risk but she insisted her very mild cough was the result of a large tumor and demanded to have it checked out. She was dead on and claimed she saw a person on TV with the same symptoms and when she fell asleep her dead husband in her dream told her to go to the doctor and her she was. The second was a guy who said he felt like he was stabbed and thought something went wrong with his surgery when they removed a cyst from his lung. He was half right. The surgery went fine but he had a thin strip of metal shish kababing him through the chest because he apparently plopped onto his bed without removing some junk including a large 6 inch receipt spike. His bandages covered up the new wound. In other words it felt like he was stabbed because he was stabbed. He apparently plopped onto his bed without removing some junk including a large 6 inch receipt spike. Why? Why would you put that on your bed? In 4th grade me, mid 1990s, had a terrible shooting pain in my stomach. It got to the point where I couldn't walk. The doctor told me on the first visit it was probably a stomach virus and gave me some meds. 
I was staying home from school due to the pain and was watching Full House, and Jesse had to go to the hospital and get his appendix removed. I was so freaked out I made my parents take me back to the doctor the next day. I was crying and told the doc I think I had appendicitis. He did some checks and confirmed it. Surgery same day. After surgery they told me if it waited another few days it would have burst. Full house may have saved my life. I caught whooping cough, bordetella pertussis, and literally begged the doctors to run tests. Weeks and weeks passed and they just told me it wasn't whooping cough. But I was catching back to back flu cold bronchitis. Girlfriend also caught it and we again begged them to run tests to which they told us they don't want us because by now they can't treat us anyways. So it made no difference. I explained that as they told me it was just a cold, I'd been going to work for weeks. Well sick. I hate this too. But I wanted to keep my job so I went, and two colleagues have newborns. So it would be good to warn them in case they catch it off me. They ran the tests and diagnosed us. But such a pain in the ass. I watched the episode of Grey's Anatomy where there was a patient with severe migraines and Eric Shepard can't figure out where his pain is coming from. Mark Sloan comes in, looks at him and shoves a pencil up his nose, diagnosing him with a deviated septum. For years I had suffered with migraines and headaches and recently stopped breathing fully out of one side of my nose. Stuck my finger up, felt bone, went to the doctor a few days later. My general doctor didn't believe me. I went to an ent and told him what I thought was wrong. And by golly I was right. Severely deviated septum. Had surgery a few weeks later. My wife Sobe Jin was out of the country when she started to go into labor. Her blood pressure had been high but we were monitoring it. In the hospital it was through the roof. I looked at her chart. Researched everything online and told the doctor on call that she has H-E-L-L-P. He ignored me. Said it was fine. When the delivery was almost done her blood pressure dropped to nothing. A nurse shot her up with something. Because the doctor was busy eating lunch. And she recovered but I will never forget holding my wife's hand thinking that this might be the last time I see her alive. When her OB Jim got back to town she confirmed the diagnosis I gave independently. We live in a small town. The doctor avoids me. I can imagine for good reason. Two. I would have a few fists to say to someone who nearly cost me my so's life on the goddamn birthing table. Once while I was working as an EMT, we ran a call for a guy who had gotten s faced and fell flat on his face on the sidewalk outside his apartment, cutting open his forehead. At the hospital, he was told he would be breathalyzed to obtain a back and loudly proclaimed I'm feeling eyeing. .308. He promptly blew a .308 and the whole team applauded. These are the best kind of drunk people, the ones who know how fricked up they truly are. My gran was having chest pains and thought she was either having a heart attack or indigestion from a pastrami sandwich. So she went to the doctor. While she was there her BP was 210 stroke 90. The doctor said that she was obviously having indigestion and that the pain she was having was gas pockets. And prescribed her an antacid and a higher dose blood pressure medication than she was already taking. She took it and her pressure bottomed out. I took her to the hospital and found out she had been having a heart attack for the past 2 days. She died that night. I'm still bitter 18 years later. The best. Worst. Part is no lawyer would take the case against him because she was old and was going to die sooner anyhow. You have been visited by the Taoist dog. Comment photos everywhere to get an exciting trip full of adventures. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.